Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Damn Fancy Creations. And before we get started on our tutorial today, I had two other pieces of information to share with you guys. The first one is that I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Amanda. She made these adorable earrings. She started making some clay earrings a couple months ago and her skill has improved so much. I love these earrings. Um, she can make all different styles, colors, all sorts of things. So if you guys are looking for some more earrings for yourself or gifts for friends and family, please go check her out on Facebook at Concord Customs. The second thing I wanted to mention is that I decided to finally start a patron group. I have thought about this for a little while and finally just decided to go for it. If you're not familiar with patron groups, they are similar to tutorial groups, but they are a little bit more um, focused on tutorials and they're more personal. They're not going to be as large. My tutorial group has about almost 11,000 members in it, but patron groups are much, much smaller. So you really get more of my undivided attention when you have questions about things. I also offer my patrons discounts on my glitter, my digital files. I have digital files uploaded for free every month for my patrons. My patrons also get access to ad-free YouTube videos, all that fun stuff. Um, for the second tier, you can also have a one-on-one -on -one chat with me every month to go over um, maybe areas that you're concerned about, whether it's crafting or business related, Etsy related. I can help you guys with all of that kind of stuff. So if that is something you're interested in, I will link it in the description so you guys can check it out. So for today's tutorial, we are going to be doing another super fun detachable ice lid for a tumbler. This one is a margarita style. It is a original margarita. I personally like mango margaritas best, but I know there are some classic margarita lovers out there. So I had to do a tutorial on it. I love how this particular tumbler turned out. I almost want to keep it for myself, even though I'm not a classic margarita drinker. <laughs> so in this video, of course, I will go over how I glitter my tumbler, how I base coat it, apply the vinyl, how I make the base lid for my ice, and of course applying the ice, the limes, all that kind of stuff. And I will show you guys how to apply the magnets, which eventually will make the lid detachable for proper cleaning. So if you guys are ready to see how I make my On The Rocks margarita version of the detachable lid, let's get started. Alright guys, so as always we are going to start with a prepped tumbler and we are going to spray paint it a matte white. Hog offers the pre-sanded tumblers and I have been purchasing them and I do like them. So this one is a prepped 20 ounce modern curve and we are just spray painting it with a flat white paint. I personally like Rust-Oleum best. I just feel like it goes on smoother and better than Krylon or other brands that I've tried before. And I like to base coat all of my cups white because it really helps the actual base color pop a little bit more, especially since we're using fluorescent colors today. If I tried to apply these fluorescent colors directly on the stainless, they would not have the same appearance that they would if I had a white base. So the colors that we are using for our actual base are fluorescent yellow and fluorescent green from Krylon. Um, I believe they are the only paint cans that have fluorescent colors. I could be wrong, but I typically just use Krylon. And you have to shake these very, very well because they are kind of a different formula than your regular spray paint. And this is the yellow 
and I am just going to spray it right beneath the top edge of the cup. I do want the top rim to still be white just because on a actual frozen margarita or margarita on the rocks, the ice melts at the top and it's a little bit of a lighter color than the bottom of the glass. So once we have our yellow sprayed, we are going to go in with some green. This is fluorescent green. I know it doesn't have an actual color on the can. And I do always test spray just to make sure it will come out <laughs> smoothly and not powder. And for the green, I am just going to spray the bottom all the way around. And then we are going to ombre the green up into the yellow. And don't be too worried if you get the green a little bit up into the yellow um, too far because you can always go back and add some more yellow, which is what I did end up doing. I had to replace the nozzle on this one because it did get clogged. So I just took the old one or the one off of the yellow and added it to the green. And you guys can see I am holding it pretty far away. This is so I don't have a super blunt line when I'm spray painting. And this is pretty much what my cup looks like before we add the glitter. So next I'm going to show you guys how I added the glitter with the epoxy method. So once the spray paint is dry, we are going to take some epoxy. I usually use about, I don't know, 15, 20 milliliters. I don't typically measure like I should, but I do use a little bit more um, epoxy than most people if I'm doing ombres because I want that epoxy to soak up the glitter and cause the glitter layer to be a little tacky so that when I sprinkle on my next color it sticks really well. So I will smooth out my epoxy really well, pop all those bubbles with my torch, And then I am going to apply my glitter with a tea strainer. My tea strainer looks a little bit like a medicine cup. Um, I just prefer this shape. You guys can get any shape that you like. And right now I am just sprinkling on some white glitter around the top rim of the cup. I am using classic martini from the Drunk Flamingo. Then I am going to use the Irish Buck Cocktail, also from the Drunk Flamingo. This is going to be the main color of our margarita. And I am doing the same thing. I am just going to tap my tea strainer all the way around the cup. And I'm leaving a little bit of a space between the white glitter and the green glitter. And this is where our yellow glitter is going to go. The yellow that I will be using is St. Jude from Peachy Olive Glitter. And I did mix this with a little bit of the green that I'm using, just so it wasn't such a huge transition from green to yellow or yellow to white. And I am just going to tap this right in the middle of the two glitters. I'm sorry that my arm is in the way. I did not realize that it was in the way when I was filming. But you guys can see how high I hold my tea strainer. And if you need to, you can go back in with either the white or the green glitter just to kind of blend the two colors a little bit better. And 
And once that layer of epoxy is cured, we are going to add another layer of epoxy. This one is going to be a little bit thicker than my original coat because we want to make sure that all that glitter gets covered really, really well. I will typically apply it from top to bottom and then I will go back and smooth it out from bottom to top. Be careful when you apply epoxy to the bottom of your tumbler because you want to make sure it is a relatively thin layer. You don't want globs of epoxy on the bottom, which can cause your cup to sit unevenly. And after we apply our epoxy, we are going to pop all those bubbles. If you don't have a big torch, I highly recommend it. And once this layer of epoxy has cured, we are going to take it off our turner, sand it really good, and then apply our vinyl. So this is what our tumbler looks like once I have cleaned the rims and sanded any little glitter bumps that we may have. If you guys have not seen how I clean my rims, I will link a video now if you want to check that out. You want to make sure you have a smooth surface for our vinyl application. I thought this quote was fitting. It says, toes in the sand, marg in my hand. The V was <laughs> having trouble coming up, so I ended up applying that um, separately than the rest of the vinyl. Um, part of this quote is hand-lettered by me. I do have this SVG up on the drunkflamingo.com if any of you guys are interested in it. If you guys have watched my videos, you know I always use transfer tape with lines. I feel like it really helps keep everything even and straight when I go to apply it to my tumbler. So I have the blue-green vinyl already stuck and now we are going to apply that to our white offset. This vinyl, I don't know what color it is. It is a blue-green holographic. It's super pretty. It does come from my local supplier, which is um, Perfect Press HTV. I will link them in the description if you guys want to check out their website. They have some of the best vinyl I have found, and their prices are great. And you guys can see that sometimes I do apply my decals in sections. I sometimes even press just one or two letters down at a time just to make sure that they are pretty straight. Sometimes they can get a little bit wonky when you're removing them um, or you weed them. Some letters can get a little bit crooked. So if you apply it in sections, you're more likely to get all those words and letters straight. This one, <laughs> I was having a little bit more difficulty than I typically do, but it turned out super cute and that is all that matters. So once we finally have all of our letters on there, <laughs> we are going to apply it to our cup. I like to line up one of the straight lines to the rim of my tumbler. I did accidentally cut my white vinyl on the metallic setting, so the backing was kind of stuck to the white vinyl. So I just used my blade to kind of lift it and help it along just to get it all off of there. So now that we have the vinyl ready to go, I am just going to line it up with the rim of my cup. And I like to press it down in the middle 
and then smooth out one side and then lift that side a little bit and smooth out the other side this is just what I find that helps me the best um, that keeps my vinyl from wrinkling or going crooked a little bit so this is what it looks like I love how this vinyl matched the green color of the tumbler and after I get all of this smoothed out I am going to apply these little limes this was kind of a last minute decision that I made I was just going to leave it blank but I thought it would look really cute with these little holographic limes kind of floating in the drink <laughs> And I was just kind of placing them, you know, randomly ar along the tumbler. I do not have a file for this. This is a file that, I don't know, I purchased years ago and edited it so um, I could get it the shape that I wanted to. So there technically isn't even a file for this exact image. I know several of you guys have asked based on my previous tutorial. So I may draw one up on Procreate and get it listed in my shop for you guys. So I love how this turned out. It's super cute. So once the vinyl has had um, a little bit of time to adhere to the tumbler, we are going to add our final layer of epoxy. Sometimes I add two layers after I apply vinyl. It just depends on if everything is sealed in, how thick of a coat I use. If I use a thinner coat, I will typically apply two layers of epoxy. I always just want to make sure that my vinyl is 100% sealed in and there won't be any problems down the road um, if this is shipped off to a customer. And again, we are still being very sparing on the bottom. We don't want any lumps down there to make the cup sit uneven. And then I will smooth it out again from bottom to top. And then we will take our torch and pop all those bubbles. I will say that you do need to be careful with your torch and the vinyl. Holographic vinyl has a tendency to wrinkle or burn very easily with your torch. So hold it as close as you can, but not as close as you would on a normal epoxy tumbler. <laughs> So now that the tumbler part is complete, I'm going to show you guys how I make my lids detachable. So for this particular tumbler, I am able to pop out this slider. You can always send this with your customer if you want to, just so they have the option of adding the slider back in. But these particular car coasters fit this tumbler pretty perfectly. This is a 20 ounce modern curve. And this coaster is about 2.75 inches. This is a smaller one at about two and a half inches. So I am going to use the larger one for this tumbler. And you guys can see it fits in there almost perfectly. And it still has room for the straw. So what I do is get, I try to get my epoxy um, pretty thick just so it's not super liquidy. So when you place your magnet, the epoxy stays pretty in place and just kind of grabs that magnet instead of spreading out and going everywhere. I know several people have asked if you can use UV resin. 
Um, I have personally not tried UV resin. I'm not sure if it would hold up as well as regular epoxy, but it is definitely something you can try and I might try it in my next video. I would still suggest to score the area where your magnet is going to go with your blade just so the epoxy has something to grab onto when you apply it or your UV resin or whatever you decide to use. For this lid, I totally forgot to score the top, but if you guys have seen any of my scoop tutorials, I do show how I do score the lids so that the epoxy grabs onto it better. You may not need to do that. I just like to be safe than sorry. Um, I just want these to hold up the best that they can for my customers. So I am going to take two magnets. These are the size I use for this particular tumbler since the lid fits so well to the car coaster. I am just using the three millimeter size, the 10 millimeter by three millimeter. I do have five millimeters as well in case I need that extra height to grab the topper. And I am going to take one little drop of epoxy and put it where I want my magnets to go. Now this is a little bit different on how I do my other scoop tumbler toppers and things like that. I just like to show you guys different ways on how to do this just in case you like one way better than another way just to show you guys some options. So since this epoxy was a little bit thinner than I would have liked, I am going to let it sit for just a little bit and thicken up. So now that it is a little bit thicker, I am adding just a small amount to the lid. And I'm going to take both magnets and kind of press them down onto the epoxy. Then I am going to very carefully go around the edge of the bottom magnet, just with some epoxy, just to make sure that it is in there really good and it is not going to go anywhere. If you would rather do this one magnet at a time, you can definitely do that. This is just how I prefer to do it. If you're scared that you're going to epoxy the magnets together, just do them one at a time. So now that our two magnets are on there, we are going to add the coaster base to the magnets. So this epoxy is pretty thick. And again, if you would rather do this in two steps, please feel free to do that. I have just done so many of these that I know how much epoxy I need for the bottom magnets, how much I need for the top magnets. So I have luckily not epoxied anything together yet. Um, it doesn't mean that it won't happen but you do what you feel comfortable doing. So once this sits for a little bit, I am going to add the coaster to these magnets. So I let this epoxy sit up for about five or 10 more minutes, just so it's more tacky. And now I am going to take this coaster And we are going to press it down on top of these magnets. That epoxy on the top magnets is going to grab the coaster and it is going to cure that way. And I do use Facet for all of this, so it does cure pretty quickly. 
I don't think I would do it with regular <laughs> epoxy. I will try UV resin next time I make one of these and report back and let you guys know how it goes. So you're basically just going to hold this in place um, and get it where you want it. Make sure that straw hole is still accessible. So this is what our finished tumbler looks like. I love how it turned out. So it is going to sit on our tumbler like this. And now we are going to decorate the topper. So once it is cured, you can take the coaster off. There will be two magnets attached to the lid and two magnets attached to the coaster. And it will sit on there just like that. And you can decorate it directly on the lid, which is what we're going to do today. These are the fake ice pieces that I use. These are actually plastic little vase fillers that I have used for years with my epoxy art. So I have a ton of them on hand. I am going to use two limes. We're going to use a whole slice and a quarter slice. I just decided why not add two limes to this <laughs> and we are going to attach them with hot glue i know some people prefer to use uv resin you can use whatever you want to to attach it um, i do go back and seal everything with epoxy that is just my preference i just would be scared that water would get trapped in any of these little crevices and mold would start to grow. I definitely do not want mold to be growing on anything that I send my customers. So I make sure everything is sealed really, really well so they can easily detach and wash the topper and wash the lid. So I have attached my lime and now we are going to attach all of our little vase filler or ice pieces. I would suggest that if you are using a larger piece, like a whole size of a lime or orange or lemon or things like that, I would attach it first because if you try to attach it with the ice already on there, it may look a little funny or be too tall. So I am just speeding this part up for you guys. It's pretty straightforward. We're just going to attach all these little ice pieces in whatever design you want. You can add just a little, you can add a lot, however you want your topper to look. And I was just so excited for how this was looking. I kept putting it on the tumbler and removing it because I just loved how it looked. So we are just going to go around and glue all these little pieces. I just use a little dot of glue. I don't use a big glob. Just enough to hold it in place until we can get some epoxy on it. And after all of our pieces are on, I'm going to show you guys how I epoxy them. So this is what the ice topper will look like. It's a little dark in my garage. <laughs> so I am just going to set my topper on a plastic cup. And I have some epoxy mixed up. I just take it and drizzle it all over the ice. It is very liquidy, so it is just going to seep down in all of those cracks and crevices.
and it's just going to ensure that everything on there is sealed nicely to each other. You're not going to have pieces pop off. Hot glue is not a permanent glue. If you are selling these to customers, do not just sell them the topper that is hot glued together. You definitely need something stronger than that. And you guys can see that there are a lot of drips kind of dripping off the topper. That is totally fine. Um, since we do have a little piece to grab onto, you can pick it up periodically and scrape the sides with a popsicle stick or gloved finger and just get those drips off of there when it's curing. I also hold it by whatever fruit I have on the topper and just kind of pour this epoxy into the sides. <laughs> just making sure that everything is sealed nicely and held together really, really well. And once this topper is cured, that is pretty much it for this tumbler. You can pop it on your lid and remove it super easily. I love how this tumbler turned out. I think that these toppers are such a fun addition to your cups. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have fun creating your own version of these ice toppers. And thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my Facebook tutorial group or my patron group that is linked in the description. Thanks for watching.